guys, Marco the Dog Trainer here. Today we're going to be doing a super quick video on my favorite e-collars for large dogs. Now, I would say that the absolute majority of the time I'm going to be using the 1900S. Yeah, because that's really what this collar is for, is big dogs that require a stronger level of stimulation. But I still wanted to kind of put the dog to arc in here as well, um, because this really covers the range of anywhere from like large all the way up to extra large. So there may be some times that I'm working with a really big dog that the arc works fine, uh, but I would just say that the majority of the time I'm probably going to be recommending the 1900S. So let's take a closer look at both of these so I can help you figure out what's going to work best for your situation. Okay guys, so we've got the Dog Chair Arc on the left and the 1900S on the right. Now we're not gonna go over every single similarity and difference in these two systems just because I've got other videos that do that, but we are gonna talk through the kind of features that make these collars so ideal for working with large dogs. And we're gonna talk about the kind of differences that may push me towards one or the other. Okay, so as far as like similarities go, they're really pretty similar co uh, collars in what they offer. So they both connect up to three quarters of a mile. Um, they're both as waterproof as this stuff can get. They both have the Nick vibrate and constant stimulations. They both have a two hour quick charge. So they're really similar collars. The main difference being the size and shape of them and the strength of them, where the arc is a little bit smaller than the 1900. You can tell that there's quite a, uh, quite a difference there. And, uh, and then again, the 1900S is quite a bit stronger than the ARC is. So I would say the vast majority of the time that I'm working with a large breed dog or an extra large dog, we're going to be using the 1900S. That's really what this system is made for. Um, it's for big dogs that require strong stimulation. Now, I wanted to give both options, though, because there definitely are times that, you know, just because we have a big dog, that doesn't necessarily mean that they need the strongest collar available. So there are a lot of times that the arc will work in those kind of one-off situations that we've got a big dog that just doesn't require a whole bunch. Um, but, you know, I, maybe it's just because I think like a dog trainer, I always kind of think I would rather have a stronger collar and not need to, to be on the high end of it than the alternative. So again, if I'm working with a giant dog that just happens to be a little bit of a baby, you know, then I'll just keep this collar low, but it's nice to know that I can go stronger if I needed it. Where if I'm, you know, trying to use the arc on a, you know, giant dog and I'm at the high end of this collar all the time, that's not going to give me a whole bunch of room to go up in a high adrenaline situation that we may need a little bit more power. So, um, so I would say 99% of the time, if I'm working with a large breed or a Mastiff, I'm going to recommend the 1900S and then the arc is going to be more so for those kind of one-off situations that, that, um, just call for something a little bit weaker. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.